Hello, everyone. We have our episode five of Shopping Locally with Mariah. You can see the reflection through my glasses today. But um, instead of doing shopping locally, today we're going to do a different twist of supporting your local businesses. So that is why today we have Megan and Mallory here from the Joliet Public Library. And we want to just talk to them about what they've been up to, how we can continue to support them, and what resources we can continue to use. So I'm going to let you guys take it away, introduce yourself, and just your role at the library. Hi, I'm Megan Millen. I'm the executive director of Joliet Public Library. I've been there three and a half years and I love it at Joliet. Nice. And I'm Mallory Hewlett. I'm the communications coordinator. I have also been at the library for about three and a half years and I also love working at the library. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And can you guys maybe give us a little history of, we know it's two locations, so you want to give a little bit of the history of the public library? Sure, so Joliet Public Library was originally founded in 1876. And then in 1903, um, the historic building that's now on Ottawa Street was built by the famous architect Daniel Burnham. And then a large addition was put onto that building in 1991. And um, that's how it looks today. And then in 2002, Joliet Public Library opened the Black Road Branch to serve the city's um, busy west side. Nice, nice, nice. And um, what would you say is the different services you guys offer them? We offer so many different services, so right. I'll, uh, I'll, cover, I'll cover some of them. But, um, you know, in addition to a really large collection of our physical materials, which, right. you know, books and movies, um, like DVDs, um, we have CDs, we have music that you can stream. Um, uh, we also offer, not right now, but um, we do offer programming. We're looking into offering kind of virtual programming that people can um, tune into uh, through our Facebook page. We, are, we offer um, meeting rooms that are available to be rented when we're open. Um, we have uh, databases and research aids and um, things that you can um, look up your ancestry. We, you can learn a new language, mango languages. So many things, and of course, probably our biggest resource is our staff. Our staff um, does such a good job providing, you know, high-level service um, for our, to our patrons, whether our doors are open or closed. Love that. And would you say both of those, all those resources are, like, in both locations? You could do that in either location. Yes. Yeah, so at Ottawa Street, um, we do have a digital. Our digital media studio is right. specifically housed at Ottawa Street. Sometimes um, we do technology classes um, that are offered at both buildings, like Photoshop or um, like Adobe Audition, things like, not Audition, but um, the video one. Right, right, right. Premiere, things like yes, that. Yes, Premiere, exactly. Um, so we have those that are available at both, but our digital media studio is specifically located at our Ottawa Street branch. Awesome, awesome. And I want to talk a little bit more about that because I came to visit you guys you know, many months ago. And I remember you guys showed me the um, digital media studio, which I thought was really cool because I do work like that. So you want to talk to us a little bit more about that, like what different like programs, because I've seen a lot and I was like, this is really awesome. Yeah, sure. Um, so the digital media studio um, has so many different things that you can do. We have um, a large format printer, which can print posters. If you're, if you're um, a local business and you want to um, kind of promote your business and get your marketing really um, steamrolling ahead. You can make an appointment um, with our staff at the Digital Media Studio and they'll be able to help you out um, with uh, promotional materials, marketing materials, whether it's flyers or um, working on your um, posters or anything that you want to use to promote your business. And we're really, really proud of that. We um, also have a t-shirt printer that's relatively new. I believe that we, um, you know, kind of just started offering that um, service. And that's something that people have been really excited that they can make an appointment and then get their designs or also um, have our staff help them design a logo. So that's really, really cool. We love that. Yeah, most definitely. And, you know, some stuff we're going to talk about is, you know, probably can't do it now, but when you guys reopen, I saw you guys had like a library visit or like things for like the youth. And I thought that was pretty unique because certain libraries within like the city of Chicago where I'm from, I don't think they offer certain things like that. So I was just curious to learn a little bit more about that for when you guys do open, people can keep that in mind. Right, in the past, before all this happened, uh, right. both branches offered um, to host visits from anywhere from daycare centers, 
preschools, all the way up every grade of school, all the way through high school mm -hmm. for um, research and stuff. What this does is it introduces children to the library. Some of them may not come with their parents, so they get to see it and learn how fun it is. And then their parents can come back and get them a library card, hopefully. Um, but then all the way up through high school where they can learn about what databases are available for their research projects mm -hmm. and um, for studying and also a place for them to come and study in between classes, especially the high school, um, the Juliet Township High School is on a staggered start. So a lot of times we'll right. see kids in here during the time in between um, before it's their time to go to class. So we like to be able to offer that to the, to the teachers to bring their classes over here. Yeah, most definitely. I really love that. Like I said, it gets it more hands on. Like, I feel like we're teaching kids, like, it's not just a library, go check out books. There's so many other things that you can do and learn. So I think that's pretty cool. So now going to what we're going through today, this pandemic, like, you know, it's, it's a lot, it's frustrating, but we're keeping hope alive. So although you guys are temporarily closed, so the building itself, you guys are still working behind the scenes. Um, what are some ways that we can still use you guys resources just right at home? Okay, right. So right now, anyone, whether you have a library card today or not, anyone can go onto our website and sign up for a library card immediately and get access. So once this is over, we'll ask you to come in and, and get it verified. But right now, anybody who's listening can sign up for our library card and you can start using all of our online products right away, including all of our eBooks that are available. So you can have access to movies. We have a product that has movies and TV shows and music and e-magazines and all these things are right now for free for you. And right now, um, Ancestry.com has really stepped up during this pandemic and now offers their entire database for free. So if somebody wanted to, now is a perfect time to just start your genealogy and you can trace your family tree right back to the Mayflower if you want to, if you have lots of time and that's how you want to spend right. <laughs> You can do that from our, our uh, website right now. Um, we're starting in May an online book club with us and five other libraries um, in our Pinnacle Consortium are going to be um, everybody reading the same book. So that's going to be happening soon. Mm -hmm. um, even though we're closed, we are not gone. We are still here to serve you. Mm -hmm. so, and we continue to be and we always will be. Good, good, good. Love that. And I kind of, that kind of goes to my next question. Like, how are you guys still operating your business during these times? I'm sure people are wondering. Right. Well, we're, we're working from home um, mm -hmm. for the most part. Once in a while, we have to go in for a few things, paying bills right. and whatnot. But we're mostly all of us working from home. But we're having um, constant Zoom meetings with each other just like this. Um, we're um, meeting as, as departments, as groups. And even today, we had our very first ever all staff Zoom meeting. So all, there was like 85 of us on oh, wow. <laughs> squares all over Zoom. Um, and that it was so much like fun. Everybody. <laughs> everybody was tiny. It was the tiny Brady Bunch. <laughs> but it was great to see everyone's faces and right. to kind of exchange what we've been doing during this time and what hobbies were taken up and stuff. It was fun to reconnect. But we're also working hard about what's going to happen when we return. Because we know right. this is forever. Right. And we know there will be a day when we can start offering our services again. And how soon that is is still up in the air because the governor's order to stay home um, and the non-essential business piece of it, we don't know yet where libraries fit into that. So there's a possibility that sometime in May, we could be offering curbside or um, drive through at the Black Road Branch service, mm -hmm. but I don't know yet, and I can't promise that to anybody. But we are working on what's called a safe return task force to make sure that when we do open, we're doing it in a way that protects our staff and patrons from spreading the virus around in a socially distant way. But still, we, we're a library, and we want to be able to serve the public as soon as possible. And we know people need our computers right now, and they need our services and our reference help right now so it's killing us to not be able to help them and so we're working on a safe plan to open as soon as we humanly possibly can oh that's good to know like i'm like you said it's, it's just hard because we don't know when that day will be but we want people to know that to stay t stay tuned like you guys will be finding ways that you can still help your you know everyone that usually comes in on a normal basis with the computers things like that so i mean that's good to know so thank you for sharing that part and so 
going along with that, I know you guys have been on Facebook a lot, which is really great because that's what we're using right now. It's the only way that we can communicate. So just talk to me about like how you've been using social media to you guys' advantage right now. Social media has been really great during this time for us to still be able to connect with our patrons who were maybe coming in to the library on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, or who were also attending our programs or bringing their kids to our programs. Um, so what we've been trying to do is just be as in engaging as possible and to really focus on sharing not only um, what we at the library have to offer, but what else is going ar on around us. Because um, at the Julia Public Library, what I really enjoy about us is we are, we love partnering with um, other areas, organizations, businesses around in our, er in our Julia area. And um, we want to be a good community partner. So we are promoting our digital resources, our ebooks, our audiobooks, our databases, all that good stuff that we have available. But we're also trying to be a good neighbor, be a good partner, and um, help out, you know, our community partners. Most definitely. And this shows, like I said, you guys are being really great on Facebook, sharing things like you said, and talking about how we can still use you guys' services. So as I was scrolling through, I noticed Operation Hope. So let us know what that is exactly. Okay, so Operation Hope, and the HOPE stands for Handing Out Protective Equipment, is an initiative that we came up with in a brainstorming session at Joliet about how can we contribute to the, the greater problem that's happening in um, the country. And we really can't, we don't have enough digital um, 3D printers to really substantially make a lot of masks. Mm -hmm. or make a lot of this stuff. But what we do have are empty book drops right now. And so um, we came up with the idea of why don't we collect PPE that other people might have into our book drops. And so we started partnering with other area libraries and there's um, now seven of us. So there's Joliet Public Library, Shorewood, Plainfield, New Lenox, Three Rivers Libraries, Cole City, and the Robert W. Rowe Library, which is in Sheridan, Illinois. And um, all of us are collecting things such as masks, homemade masks. Um, we haven't gotten any N95 masks, but we're still hopeful. Gloves, um, face shields, anything that is considered PPE. And we're, we're giving these things to local hospitals. So we've got um, Amita St. Joe's, Silver Cross, and Morris Hospital that we're providing with this um, equipment as it comes in. Nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we've gotten hundreds of pieces in our book drops so far. So um, the hospital, oh, St. Joe is the one that takes, I believe it's St. Joe or is it um, Silver Cross? Silver Cross. Silver Cross has been accepting the homemade masks. The other hospitals so far don't want those yet, mm -hmm. but um, Silver Cross has been very um, appreciative of our efforts and of all those masks that we're collecting and giving them. Um, so if anybody's listening and they are in a dentist's office and not using their stuff right now or a vet, a vet tech or a um, groomer or anybody who has masks or gloves or things like that laying around that they could um, offer up to our healthcare professionals at this time, please drop them off in one of those book drops. The one we're collecting is at Black Road. Um, so please uh, share and help the, the healthcare workers who are putting themselves at risk every single day for us. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. Love that. Giving back to as well. And I saw that I was like, that's what we need. We need to come together and you guys are doing that, working with other organizations, libraries in order to get all those materials that they need. And so that's what I was going to kind of ask like the outcome, which you said you've already seen, received like a hundred so far, like over a hundred like yeah. items, which is amazing. So basically you're saying if I want to donate, I could just come up to the library and it's a bin or mm -hmm. there's a book drop yeah. where we normally take our book returns. Oh, right gotcha. now we're not okay. taking any books because they're, we're just not ready for them yet. Right. There will be a day when we will, but today's not that day. So since they're sitting empty, we're collecting um, for the hospitals. Love that. Love that. And what's been some type of like feedback you guys got, at, you know, after dropping off to the hospital, what's been some things said about that? Like, what have you noticed? I think our maintenance man who dropped them off said um, they were going to write us a letter that they were so thrilled that they were, um, that we would, would do this for them. Uh, they were very, very appreciative. So we were gratified that it's working and we're doing our part in, 
even though we're closed, we're still helping our community. Most definitely, most definitely. And is there any other way, you know, we can still support you guys other than this Hope Foundation is, I mean, the Operation Hope, is there any other way that others can help support you guys? Um, go to our website, use our resources, um, check out an ebook, um, learn something new in one of our databases. That's Our website is joliatlibrary.org. You can go to our Facebook page, like our Facebook page, share some of our posts, because that's how we reach more people is when okay. we're, you know, sharing these posts and um, getting our message out there and getting the message of our community out there. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And what do you guys look forward to for the future of the library once the stay at home order is lifted? We're really looking forward to resuming our service to the public, to help people who right now need us so much with help with the unemployment claims and yeah. resume building and anything else they very much need during this uncertain time. Um, they normally come to us, they turn to us and we, our doors are closed. So we're looking forward to a time when our doors can be open and we can safely start helping some people either on the phone or in person um, to get the resources they need and even just some different books to read, some different movies. I'm sure everybody's tired of what's in their home by now. Yes. <laughs> and ready for some new, to get their kids some new books to read and, um, and just an escape from all this. Yes, most definitely. Well, you guys are doing an awesome job. We can all tell the way you're giving back and still staying on top of everything at the library. So we do appreciate you guys. And is there anything else that you guys wanna mention that we haven't talk, talked about already? Just that we can't wait to come back and we can't wait to open our doors again. Awesome, awesome. awesome. And one other thing, if everybody's out there, if they could please fill out the census. We had a big grant front that we were given to do all these, um, all this push for the census. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately it was right before we closed down that we were ready to launch all this stuff. Right. And we weren't able to do what we were planning to do. So um, please, it's easy, it's quick. It took me like 10 minutes or less to fill out the census. It helps the community, it helps Will County, and it helps to make sure that we have enough funds when this um, is all over. And now they're, every dollar is more important than ever. So yes. please fill out the census. Yes, and then we can go to that right to you guys' website. Yeah, there's information on our website. And even if you don't have a computer, uh, you can do it by phone. Mm -hmm. So. Cool, cool, awesome. Well, you guys give us your social media one last time so we just know how to keep up with you guys and get your resources. So um, we're on Facebook at Joliet Public Library. We're on Twitter at Joliet Library. And we're also on Instagram at Joliet Public Library. Awesome. Well, thank you guys again so much. We appreciate all this knowledge you are dropping. And we hope to be in you guys building sometime soon. We're just keeping hope alive, like we said. So thank you guys. And thank you all for watching episode five of Shopping Locally with Mariah. Stay tuned for the next one. Bye, everybody.